Hi everybody. Long story short, I have a cool brush that allows me to paint anatomy and in fact all other organic forms that are cylindrical with as little effort as possible. This technique hasn't really evolved much since I started using it a year or two ago, so I thought maybe it's a good moment to share it with you in this short video. Alright, so let's define a problem with painting organic shapes and its most common solutions. The biggest problem for me is that organic shapes are cylindrical. That means they can be facing multiple directions, resulting in complex changes in colors. As the areas facing the light source directly are brighter than those facing it at some non-right angle, you can expect a lot of gradients that are important, easy to omit and not so easy to paint. The most traditional approach would probably be to spend enough time painting them with sharp brush and low opacity, which, well, takes a lot of time and still can look rather bad if you don't have enough experience. Probably a better idea would be to utilize the power of digital and use selection, but that raises some other problems. First, you have to nail this selection. Secondly, in case you still need this selection later, you either have to save all of them as a local selections or lose time recreating them multiple times. All right, so what's my idea of how to do it? Take a look at this brush. At the top, I have this rectangle of high opacity that will let me easily cover areas with paint. But underneath, there is a gradient that will make the brush fade away on one side of the stroke. How is this intended to work? You pick a color you want on the top of cylinder and paint the top part, then rotate the brush 180 degrees, pick the bottom color and... I guess that's already starting to look like a cylinder, right? It still requires quite a lot of work and tweaking, of course, but I hope you start to see my point here. Controlling the brush may not be that easy at first. Firstly, you have to control the tip rotation. For me it's easier as my tablet supports tilt, so I can change the rotation a bit during the stroke, but even then I have only like 90 degrees of freedom here, so I still have to prepare before each stroke. So don't worry if your tablet does not have tilt. You still should be able to get this effect right, as we both need to change the rotation often. A great way to control it is by rotating the canvas, which is probably the fastest way, but can make you lose track of where exactly you wanted to land a stroke. The other way of controlling rotation is to actually rotate the brush, which got significantly easier in Krita 5 with this rotation widget in the right click pop-up. The second aspect you need to learn to control here is the brush size, as it has a huge influence on the outcome. The bigger is the brush, the longer is the gradient, and the more cylindrical is the transition between two colors. It sounds a bit complex at first, but considering how fast you get the results, I think it's worth trying out. You spend a bit more time preparing for each stroke, but then make way less of them. And that's good in terms of learning and understanding what form you want to paint. Now a bit more on this technique itself. I was mostly drawing cylinders with two colors on each side, but there's way more to that. After distinguishing the light and shadow family, you will need to change the color a few more times, gradually tweaking them with smaller and smaller brush tip. If the colors seem too muddy, maybe try to lighten it up and change the hue a bit. I think that creating the intersections between cylinders is rather intuitive at least. You can see how I made this line on the palm of the hand or the nails. You just need to take good care of used colors, rotation and brush size, and with a little bit of practice you should be fine. After making the core of light and shadow, you can go on with all those more specific light effects. Sometimes you can have a backlight visible on the shadow's hard edge. Just not use a too big brush in this situation, as you can lose this roundness. Ambient occlusion will happen when two forms connect. Sometimes it can be rather one-sided, sometimes you need to draw a stroke on both sides. Just follow the reference image and try to find those gradients. Something that's worth noting here is that you can still use this brush for drawing non-rounded surfaces if you paint in another direction. You can notice I'm too lazy to switch to any other brush preset and just paint everything with this one. Now let's move on to the brush preset itself. The original brush tip was created by Rakuri and I'm really happy he let me use it in my brush pack. I made some tweaks to it though, mainly to make it use the RGBA features. Apart from fading opacity, there's one more gradient happening here. Near the sharp edge, the brush is a bit darker than the color you pick. I believe it helps to make those cylinders look even more rounded. 
It also creates some distinction between strokes, making it look less blurry, which is kind of important for a brush with this much softness. In terms of brush settings, of course we have opacity controlled with pressure. What's very important here is the flow. It changes with pressure too, and has a very small value of 8%. Otherwise, two consecutive brush stamps would be stacked on top of each other, and you would lose the main purpose of the brush, which is this gradient. Make sure to keep that in mind if you want to recreate it in other art programs. As I've said before, my tablet recognizes tilt, so I use it to control the rotation. Recently, I found a nice trick to make it work better with the rotation widget I mentioned earlier. By moving this line a bit up or down, you can control the angle of the brush without changing the value on the widget. I move it 45 degrees up as I'm right-handed. For a left-handed artist, that would have to be moved down. And even without tilt recognition, you should be able to tweak this widget like that. This way, the widget circle really shows the brush angle in my most comfortable hand position. By the way, I made a feature request some time ago to be able to do it in the Krita settings. But we'll have to patiently wait for it. If you're a Krita user, in the description you'll find my free brush pack with this preset included, so you can simply check out if this way of painting cylinders suits your workflow. It doesn't have this angle widget tweaked, so you can make it on your own if you need it. Let's call it a small brush making exercise. If you don't use Krita for some reason, you can also download the brush tip as a PNG file instead. There's an original version and one without any color shifts in sight if you're using Photoshop or any other program that can use this information. Now I think that's everything. I don't think I recall seeing anyone using this technique, but that's probably just because of my ignorance as I don't follow that many artists' workflows. Likely it can be quite common, but even if it is, it feels great to discover it by myself. It's the first time I made a video so much related to actual painting techniques and not Krita features, so definitely let me know what you think about it and if you found it to be useful. I'd also love to answer a question in the comments if you have any. If you didn't like it, don't forget to thumb this video down and unsubscribe the channel. Big thanks for staying to the end of this video and have a great time painting. Cheers!